Hi, this is Dr. Graves with the CSUN Geography Department. This is a video tutorial designed to help students learn how to take a random sample and a stratified sample from a very large data set and to use the pivot table to speed the process along. So what we have here is water usage data for three years starting in 2014 and there are approximately 36,000 rows of data. It's all anonymized now. So the data is columns from G over to AP are the water usage data in 100 cubic feet. That address used uh, 2,100 cubic feet of water. So let's go ahead and start analyzing the data. The first a uh, new column that you want to put in here is count and we're going to do that because we don't want to include in our data set any of the addresses that don't have say 36 months of data uh, and then we want to type in mean uh, so we can get the average uh, amount of water used by each household and then let's type in the word rand for random numbers we're going to put that in this column and then type in strat or cell a t1 that's where we're going to put our stratified numbers later so in order to get a count of months that are non-zero months meaning where there's actual data type in equals and then the following formula C-O-N-T-I-F, so that's count if, left parentheses, and what we want to do is to go over to cell G2, is our first month of data, January 14th, and then we're going to highlight all the way back across until we get to cell AP2, so you see the formula there, G2 to AP2, and that is our cell reference and then the criteria we're going to use is quotation marks greater than sign zero quotation marks again so it says look in all of those cells and if you find any cell value that's greater than zero then count that and press enter and that gives us 36 and if we were to look in this row of data we would find 36 numbers greater than zero. Next we're going to calculate the average or the statistical mean of water use in each of those cells and that formula is equals average and then the same thing we're going to highlight these cells that have our water usage data uh, G2 to AP2 that has a colon in the middle and press enter and that household used on average 23.22 uh, CCFs of water. And then this last one is an organizing tool and we want a random number between 0 and 1 in this column. So type in equals rand open parentheses close parentheses and press enter and it gave us a random number and that will regenerate every time uh, that we do almost anything in this spreadsheet. For now, highlight those three cells and press Control C. That puts those three cells in the clipboard and they're ready for pasting. The fastest way to paste these to all of the cells in these three columns all the way down to the bottom of our data set is to take your cursor, move it to the lower right hand corner of the three cell block Notice that the cursor changes from thick white to thin and black and double click once it's thin and black and it will fill out the rest of the column with those formulas and if I scroll down here quickly to the bottom you can see that it stopped on the last row of values. Before you do anything else press Control C again and that will change this green boundary of our pasted cells into a dashed line boundary that indicates that these cells are back 
in the clipboard. We're doing this because we want to paste the formula results back in as values so that there are no more formulas. There are two ways of doing this after you've pressed Control C and highlighted the variables or the values you want. Either click on the down arrow below the paste button on the home tab and you will find values as an option and you can click on that. The other way to do that is simply to press in sequence Alt, then E, then S, then V, then Enter. You can try both. So now if you click here in any of these cells you will find that there is no longer a formula but simply a value that was the result of the form. Okay, so at this point, if you wanted to draw a random sample, say of 100, all you would have to do is to click on the word RAND and, and then click on SORT and FILTER and simply sort A to Z or Z to A. It doesn't matter. It's random. Give it a, a moment and you'll notice that uh, the data has now been sorted by those random numbers. And if you wanted to, at this point, you could just pull out, say you wanted a, a random sample of 100, and there's 100 cells, and I just highlighted all the way to column A. I could copy this, paste it out into another spreadsheet, and I would have a random sample of values. The problem with this is that sometimes random samples oversample a certain part of a town or a certain part of your demographic, a certain part of whatever you're trying to sample, and then undersamples other places or other people. You get a random sample, but not a representative sample. And oftentimes you want a representative sample. So in order to get a representative sample, we need to prepare the data a little bit differently. So I'm clicking back here, and what I want to do is now sort the data a second time. This time, we want to sort it uh, to do a custom sort. So you can click anywhere in the data block, click Sort and Filter, and this time choose Custom Sort. And what we want to do is to change the sort key from RAND to type, should be near the top, and then add a level, and then um, zip code. At this point, just click OK. And there's a sort warning, but you can just click OK. It takes a moment, and now all of the multiple individual metered types have come to the top. Now, maybe we want a certain number of these types of customers from this zip code to be in our sample so that they don't accidentally get sampled out. It's at this point that we need to create a pivot table in order to count the number of observations per type and the number of observations per zip code. In order to do this quickly, we need to use a pivot table. So click anywhere in the data block, click insert and click pivot table. It's going to put everything in a new worksheet, so click OK. And you may want to change your tab name from sheet one or four or whatever by double clicking in it and then just type over pivot. You can leave it too. So what do we want in our pivot table? What do we want to count up? Well, we want to count the number of households by type. And then we can, we can pull something like type down here into values again. And it's going to give us a count. And so we have uh, nearly 5,000 apartments and almost 31,000 residential homes. Then grab zip, click it, and drag it. Click, come on, click and drag down here to rows in that box. And then it will divide our observations by zip code as well. And you see that we have some junk zip codes in here that we will eventually filter 
out. There's a couple of ways of filtering these things out. One is to just click on um, this down arrow next to row labels, and then you can just uncheck all of the uh, misentered data, the data that's uh, wrong and or have so few observations that you don't really want to use them. Uh, in our case, it should be these uh, middle one, two, three, four, five, and met, did we get that right? Well, there's uh, 380. We'll get rid of that one as well. All right, so now we have robust samples in virtually every area except 91351, which only has five apartments, and so we won't worry about that. Next, we need to filter by the total number of observations. So we recall that we had count, and we want to at, grab count and bring that down into the filters box. So we didn't want to use these uh, observations that only had four months of data. So click this down arrow next to all, S click select multiple items, deselect everything by selecting all, and then scroll down to the bottom and select 36. At this point, this is all of the observations we have that have at least 36 months data, and that's pretty good. That's what we want. We also want to have, let's say, 10 observations from each category. So if there's 10 observations in each category, then that's a for the smallest category, which is one, 102 observations, we need to pick out one out of every 10 observations, which should give us at least 10 observations of apartments in this zip code. So it's at this point we will construct our stratified sample. Click back on your main data tab, water use, anon, go over to cell AT2, under the word strat and type in one. Follow that by two, three, four, five, six, and so on until you get to 10. When you get to cell AT12, type in equals and enter AT2, which is the one. And what that's going to do is allow you to repeat this sequence of one to 10 many times over. So you see the one, highlight that, copy it, and then double click in the lower right hand corner to replicate that sequence to the bottom of the page. You see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, one, two, three, four, and so on. While that's highlighted, press control C to copy it, and then paste it back as value and the formulas are gone and simply the numbers are there. You could sort it by strat, but that's not necessary. You can come back to pivot table, click, right click into your pivot table and click refresh and now grab strat, put it in the filters box and click on the down arrow next to the word all and say, let's just pick out the, deselect everything, and pick out uh, all the one. And there we see we get, at the very least, a sample of 10 from each category. Click in your pivot table, grab mean, and pull it down in, make sure it's in values mm -hmm. column. We change sum of mean to the value settings, and then change that to average, click OK, and now we have the average CCFs used by apartments. We see that's quite small, and then for single-family houses, we see this is the average. That concludes this rapid-fire video.